Hello Dapplings and welcome to a new first taste for the channel where today we are privileged to be able to check out DICE Legacy ahead of its release date tomorrow. Thank you very much to DestinyBit for the game key. Now what is DICE Legacy you might ask other than bloody gorgeous as you can already see from this splash screen. DICE Legacy is, <laughs> though uh, the, the DICE part is probably going to throw quite a few of you, it is actually a survival city builder roguelike with a lot of uh, the kind of aesthetic and feel of a board game. Dice feature prominently. As with many board games, and indeed many, many computer games at this point, where uh, effectively hidden dice rolls govern a lot of the game mechanics. But in Dice Legacy, the dice rolls themselves are front and center and have actually been woven into the game to represent your your colony, your colonists. And the faces of the dice will dictate the kinds of jobs that they can take. Now, as with any first taste, if you get to the end of this video and you decide that you enjoyed what, what you saw and you would like very much to see some more, then do let me know down in the comments or with a like on the video and we may see us return for an extended first taste and perhaps even if there is enough interest, uh, see this blossom into a bit of a series. Now, let us jump into the game as it is always easier to show than to describe, but uh, the first part of the game, in fact, is making some decisions. There are lots of different scenarios you can unlock. Uh, we'll be playing on Stranded. It is the beginning scenario, and uh, this will kind of set the, the narrative flow for the world that we're going to enter. Now, I have had the opportunity to be playing this for, for a day or so. I've managed to play a little bit of a way through a tutorial game, and as a result, I've unlocked the mad. And this is the first indication of the roguelike elements here. We have meta progression. Each run, you will tend to build up your your world and your well your deck, if you like, of dice. Your your hand of dice. You'll also unlock different types of rulers, and each one of them will have a different effect and different starting conditions, such as the resources that you'll start with, the kinds of buildings that you can build right from the get-go without any research, and the dice, most important of all, that you'll bring with you. However, you can replace multiple dice with ascended dice, and these are dice that you effectively champion through a game and they they enter your your deck proper and you can take them with you you've got a little bit of a difficulty section down here and a tutorial so we're going to go ahead and jump into the game i will keep the tutorial enabled as it'll offer a nice narrative pace to describing some of the game mechanics but with that said and done let's go ahead and jump into the world of dice legacy you are in for a treat Dice Legacy is a peculiar game set in a world where winters are harsh, dangers are many, and mysteries are aplenty. And the first mystery is, are we actually on a ring world? I get the impression that we are, and this fills me with excitement. We've also got a steampunk ship. There are so many questions that I am left with with just the opening sequence of this game. It is so good looking though, oh my lord. Okay. Now, we have made landfall and we've already set up a little bit of something. Now, in the lower difficulties, um, pretty much everything below legacy level, you've got the ability to pause the game. That's going to come in handy whilst we work through the game, uh, because obviously if I want to take a little bit of time to explain a mechanic, uh, I don't necessarily want time progressing because things will happen. The seasons move around. These are important things for us to pay attention to. But let's check out first steps. Dice are your workers. Each die belongs to a dice class indicated by our, its color. The upward face of the die indicates the actions it can perform. Now, uh, the orange dice are your peasant dice. As indicated over here, we also have citizens, we'll have merchants, we'll eventually have monks, and indeed soldiers. And these different classes are going to have independent wants and, and things that they disapprove of. And managing their happiness is going to be important because each different class can do different things when they're particularly pleased or when they're particularly angry. And that uh, that is part of the, the sitter builder element. Now, the main core of uh, the kind of the core game loop is rolling the dice, seeing what faces come up because each dice 
um, based on its class, will have different different uh, faces. For example, a peasant has one work face, two gather faces, one build face, one uh, defend face, and one navigate face. Peasants are kind of your jacks of all trades, if you will. If you don't have the face that you need for a particular job, as you'll notice, some jobs have uh, particular faces on them, and we'll cover those uh, in detail once we get to it, but you can re-roll the faces. However, if you like a face or you, you're trying to hold on to it for some reason, you might lock it. Now, you can only do anything in this game when it's unpaused. Freezing time freezes everything. You can still look around and have a, have a, a bit of time to think about what you're going to try and do, but you would have to... Uh, Unlock uh, time in order to, to perform any kind of action. Uh, right, I would like to do a little bit of gathering. I am going to go ahead and I am going to gather this over here. I'm going to gather some trees from this forest. Now that number up at the top there, the big red number, that's how many times I can gather from it. Now not how many resources I can take. I might be able to get quite a few resources from it if I particularly want to. Uh, now I would like to also gather up some food. Is this a hunting lodge? Yes it is. This will produce a little bit of food so let's grab that. We've also got some wreckage around here from I, I don't know because our ship is looking quite nice. We've also got a place that we're trying to build, a cookhouse which will allow us to help our dice recover their durability, which we will no doubt cover in just a moment. We've got to complete the cookhouse. We've, as, as part of the tutorial, we get a bunch of objectives, and it actually does help moving through the game. Locations. Locations are generated at the start of the game. Dice can be employed inside a location to gather resources, but this consumes the durability of the location. When the durability of a location reaches zero, the location is destroyed. Now, that is actually a really important thing to note, as some locations have synergizing effects with buildings you might be able to build later on and as long as this place has one durability it will from what i've seen largely act at 100 percent um so a forest with one durability is just as productive for a herbalist hut for example as a forest with 50 durability so you can work the durability right down to the bone and still get maximum output from uh, the buildings nearby but the moment you take that last bit of durability it is gone there's no way of you putting it back also dice similarly have a little bit of that as well let's uh, start clearing up the wreckage have we got one that's only got uh, no they've all got two okay we'll start working on this one first uh we are also going to gather a little bit more trees now this is where the durability comes in as you can see tonk there we are we're rolling the dice down and we're getting lower numbers here now we now need to build a house if we have a look down here at our buildings we've got lots of things to build by the way and more besides because it is also research we will no doubt get to that a little bit now we need six uh wood for what we want to do so it's time for us to uh, start really heavily getting rid of all of that i don't need any saws right now there's nothing we need to defend from right now there will be eventually the particularly eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed little torches when we got the big view of the whole ring that we're on and lots of buildings further along the ring that is gonna uh, be a big part of the mid to end game Use the build menu to construct new buildings. Buildings have a different requirement in resources to be built and must be within the player's territory. Some buildings require to be unlocked through the tech tree before they can be built. Buildings can be demolished to recover some of the resources used in their construction, but not all. Buildings could catch fire or go on strike due to various circumstances, mostly someone, you know, lighting them on fire or deciding to go on strike in front of them. M the buildings don't just catch fire or go on strike. The people do. Uh, and again, bringing... Uh, bringing uh, Focus to what happens when your people get very unhappy with you. Now, let's uh, have a look at the cookhouse. This will restore durability to a die, but not mercenary die. That's uh, an important one to pay attention to. We've got all sorts of resources down here. Gold, iron, wheat, ale, herbs, all kinds of nice things that we're going to have to pay very close attention to. Uh, we're going to continue trying to break these down where we can. There we are. And I believe we do now have enough for a house. Let's go ahead and get a house. Now, I'm going to... You've basically got a, a grid pattern here. I'm going to build out and I'm going to leave this spot conspicuously clear. We'll get to why in a little bit. Now, this location needs two builds. This dice only has a power of one build on its face. Not all dices have a face value of one. 
that number is just your ability, but the die the die face itself can be a multiple in some instances. And so they will count for more than, than one job if you assign that dice. And that's actually a pretty pretty important task, that one. Uh, we'll continue getting a little bit of stone because uh, we may be lucky and get some gold as well. We do not need a sword. Now, you don't have to worry about waiting until your hand is full of die before you, before you uh, pass the... Uh, before you roll the hand, it doesn't affect it. You can roll it as frequently as you can. It'll only affect the die that are in your, your die pool at the time. But the way this is the die pool, it, as far as I've seen, it doesn't get bigger. So bear that in mind. 12 die, as you can see over here, is the maximum. You can have more die in play, but you can never hold more die than 12. And if uh, any event should occur that would make you hold more, then, uh, then 12, you'll have to discard die, which is honestly a bad thing. Slot types. Locations and buildings can have different requirements in terms of resources, dies, fa uh, sorry, dice, faces, and classes. Also, the result provided by a location can be influenced by the power of the face employed. For example, this accepts only a builder face. This would accept only a gathering face, but the result is multiplied by the face power, generally allows to obtain more resources from a location. And I believe that is that doesn't cause the location's durability to drop faster, but I could be wrong about this. I've only had, uh, like I said, a day or two's uh, chance to, to dig into this, and I haven't properly for science that yet. This only accepts any peasant, but it doesn't really care what face. Uh, this will accept a navigator face. The result is based on chance and influenced by the face power. The higher the power, the higher the chance of a better outcome. This will accept any face belonging to any die, and this will accept a resource, as noted down the side there. Now, let's have a look at the house. Uh, this produces new peasant dice. Well, as it happens, I kind of want some more die in the pool, because currently we've only got 5 of 12, and that is just not enough, I tell you. Uh, let's continue gathering. Well, actually, we don't need food specifically. Right now, we want to build a wheat farm, we want to build a mill, we want to build a district hall. That is all going to require more resources. Really? I don't need that. One of your die has low durability. Psha! It's not low. If the durability of a die falls to zero, the die will perish. Durability can be restored inside the cookhouse. Now, understand that die are represented... Uh, representations of my people. They're not actually people. Uh, I mean, maybe they are, but uh, no. You'll nev notice every now and then people walking around, and if you've got a lot of peasant die, there'll be a lot of peasant workers. If you've got a lot of soldier die, there'll be a lot of people in armor wandering around, so on and so forth. Uh, so understand that while it is perhaps a little bit, uh, a little bit quirky to begin with, uh, this does actually uh, represent the people of our colony. It's just what they're going to be able to do at any particular time. Now, I don't want to strip all of this down if we can avoid it, so we'll continue to try and uh, work that down slowly. Now, we are going to want a wheat farm. We're also going to want a mill. We need a decent amount of wood, and we're going to need some stone besides. Now, on that note, let's go ahead and start planning a location for a mill. Oh, happiness. The happiness of a die class has changed. Okay, well, let's have a look at that first. So, happiness. Your actions can affect the happiness of die classes in various ways. When a die class is pleased, it will provide a powerful positive effect. But when it's angry, it'll provide a dangerous negative effect that can threaten the whole kingdom. Many actions can lower or increase the happiness of die classes, such as obtaining or losing dice. So, we've just increased the number of peasants, so the peasants are happy about this. If we lost one due to changing their class to, for example, a citizen or them dying, it would, it would make the uh, peasants unhappy. Passing and refusing policies we'll cover in a little bit, and establishing class district halls. Constructing and losing buildings within a class district, and more. If too many die belong to an unhappy die class, a riot could start. A die class will continue to exist as long as at least one face belonging to that die class is in play. Now, pay very close attention to this. One face, not one die. And that will, uh, that little bit of, uh, bit of wording will come into very, very important effect a bit later on once we have unlocked the forge. The backbone of our society, capable of doing a bit of everything. These are the peasants. You can provide, provide new peasant dice from a house. Affected when please, uh, sorry, the effect when please, they'll gather extra resources, and the effect when angry, buildings may be set on fire. Uh, yeah, we want to kind of avoid that one if we can. 
Uh, right, now, I'm thinking we're probably going to put popping down a new class hall over here. So I'm going to place down a farm right there. Let's get that on the go. Now, this one's going to need to work a die. Uh, let's get that happening. I'm going to want some more uh, stone besides. And another roll. Let's uh, get the other worker die over here. Now, right now, what we're working on is this will produce wheat, but can it only operate it during the summer. The first task is to plow it. Then we've got to sow. Then finally we can harvest and we can get some grain. Grain cannot be, or rather wheat, cannot be directly consumed. You actually have to... Uh, you have to process that in a mill first. Now, I'm going to lock this dice because it's starting to get low, but I do want extra worker. We only have summer to work on this field, at least for now. We may be able to change that later, though. Uh, let's get you in there and see what we get. Ah, two useless dice for us now. Ah, another two useless... Well, kind of possibly useful in, in the fridge. Really? Ah, uh, my lord. I mean, I'm not terribly unhappy with that, but this is going to be waiting there for a little bit. Now, these mines take an inordinate amount of time to process a job, a whole minute. And in a game where we are actually moving through, uh, through the season based on time, that's going to become a bit of an important one. Uh, we need something I can use. Uh, let's grab a little bit more stone. Sure. Now we can speed things up. You've got time controls over here. In the mo most of the difficulties, this is actually frozen. E Legacy and up, this is frozen. Uh, so only two difficulties can you actually pause it. But the hotkey is one. And this confuses me all the time because I hit one thinking to go down to the slow speed and it's not. It tries to pause the game. So if I'm in any other mode, it doesn't work. Now, two is a dangerous number. Uh, I'm going to pause and explain why two is more dangerous than one. The durability only drops when I use the die. Uh, when I re-roll the die. Uh, but I can't do anything with it if it's been rolled and it's exhausted. If I place it in here, it'll return a certain number uh, of durability to it. But if I roll this dice and I get something with a 1, I might decide that, you know, sacrificing that life is worth whatever, whatever I have to do with it. But realistically, if there's no other pressing reason why I can't place it in the cookhouse, buy 2... There's no more use for this. Two can still be used. For example, I could still get them to do a job, then re-roll them, and they, they, the face would be number one, and then I'd put them in the, the cookouts. But if I have no use for it, by the time that it's got a durability of two, on whatever face it is, straight to the cookhouse with it. That's my uh, that's my playstyle, at any rate. But there we are. We now need to use some of the food that we've been uh, gathering up. Right, halt operations. Hold right-click on a location or building to halt all ongoing operations and take the dice and resources back. That is a very important one to remember. Right, there we go. We are now uh, sowing. Fantastic. We can do a little bit more gathering. We've already got one gold, which is actually pretty awesome for us. Uh, let's go ahead and continue working this forest for now. Uh, the dye will be fed in once. There we go. Gain six week wheat. We're working on it. We need a mill. We need a district hall. Well, the mill can go down. Uh, well, let's go for the district hall first. And the reason for the district hall is a district hall will allow us to expand our territory. Expands territory and increases the efficiency nearby. Can be upgraded into a class district hall, and that will have very specific uses later on, but it can also just be useful to lift people's spirits. Now, if we place this down, you can see the uh, white area is where our territory is going to be expanded. So we're going to place this here, but generally speaking, having a district hall in the center of a bunch of stuff that you're working on is, by and large, the, the better play to make. That being said, we could place it over here, for example, and uh, grab these if we really wanted to. We're still in amongst them. But understand that a lot of buildings are simply going to be worn down with time. And so having it next to natural resources rather than buildings might not give you the most uh, longevity of its, uh, of its efficiency use. But efficiency is how fast the jobs are being done. So, for example, this stone mine is taking us like a minute to harvest. With an inf uh, efficiency upgrade provided by the district hall, that will be a lot, lot better. Efficiency determines how fast a building or location operates. District halls provide an efficiency bonus to every building and location nearby. Your town hall also provides an efficiency bonus nearby. So, uh, this is our town hall over here. If that ever goes down, we lose the game. Uh, you can interact only with locations and buildings that are within your territory. 
you can expand your territory by using district halls. To do so, place a district hall on the edge of your territory and complete its expand ter territory recipe, which is basically exploration. This marks the border of our lands. We can only really build or operate within that border. Right, we want to continue trying to build up this. Uh, we do need builders uh, at this point, though. Uh, let's continue there and roll again. Okay, I think we're going to try and get some more dice because we've only got we've half the dice that we could have. Having some more workers will be a massive, massive boon for us. All right, let's see what we've got there. It's, uh, well, okay, I'm going to hold on to you since that will actually be useful. I'm going to try and not use this as often as uh, as, as quickly as I can, um, simply because there is a maximum durability, and this restores a certain amount per roll. Uh, you are useful, so I'm going to pop you down there. You're less, so you can go over there. Let's roll again. Okay, we can make that happen, sure. We only need two more, and we're good. Finally a builder, but we need two. Well, poop. Uh, this is the point where speeding up time comes in very, very handy. But understand, the, the world is moving forward this whole time. Okay, we've now got dice that we absolutely cannot afford to mess around with. Uh, so you are going straight in there. You're going to be locked. I don't want to accidentally roll you. Uh, you two are also... Uh, kind of useless to me for now. Uh, we'll place you down there. And all we've got is the sword to roll. Uh, no, I need... Well, I guess this will work for now. Let's go ahead and continue breaking that one down. These two have got much higher durability, so I'm going to be saving them for something special in a little bit. Right, there we go. Now you can move in there and have some noms. Uh, very well. Let's continue our exploration over here. Now we are getting a little bit low on food. Thankfully the, the wreckages helped us out, but we really do need to get to the point where we have a mill sooner rather than later so we can start turning the wheat that we're, we're generating into delicious, delicious gnomes. And we're going to get a bunch of dye back in just a second. There we go. You notice the uh, little arrows there letting us know that these are now more efficient and as a result uh, I think they, they operate 25% faster. Right, one of you can go in there. There we are. And roll the dice again. Okay, we've got builder dice. Don't need them. Let's pop you over there. You can actually go up here and do your job. Uh, that would be fantastic. And you can get in there for me. And you can continue digging through. Okay, let's find out what we get. Mm, I mean, not terrible, actually. Sure, we can we can make use of you. Go ahead. All right, there we go. We've got a new die. Uh, another exploration die not strictly what we want i would very much like another worker die uh so much so that i'm gonna actually just straight up re-roll these ones come on really come on worker die oh, okay fine go and have some food i really need that unlocked at this point uh, oh there we go encampments you can sometimes find encampments with which you can establish relationships. Interacting with an encampment will alter your relationship level with it in various ways. A good relationship will bring ever-growing benefits. A hostile relationship will bring trouble for your kingdom. You can interact with the encampments by building different outposts within their range. The, possibility, uh, the possible interactions with the encampments will change based on the outpost you build. So, for example, you can have a merchant outpost, a religious outpost, or a military outpost. Uh, we're still looking to build a mill uh we're also looking to possibly upgrade our building here as well into a class district it's getting colder winter is approaching soon our fields will be frozen and venturing into the wildlands will be dangerous we need to make sure we have enough wood to burn in our steam generators we must survive uh, about steam generators yes yes <laughs> hmm getting any metal uh in fact to be fair though uh i don't think we had any metal to get until just recently so now we've got a new focus for our for our gatherers uh that we really really do rather need them to focus on quite aggressively we need five metal and a little bit besides to get a steam generator up and running and yes it does have a bit of a bit of a uh frost punk feel to that doesn't it uh right now Let's start working down the mine. 
We haven't yet got gold, and we'll occasionally get gold from a stone mine. It's not uh, super common, though. Uh, I need, now need to lock you in place. You cannot afford to go out. Neither can you, and neither can you. However, that being said, if we have a look at the encampment, a small settlement inhabited by an unknown population. Exploration could be dangerous. We'll need a good explorer. They seem uneasy about our presence. Okay, so now that one is actually based on the power of the face that we put forward. We can go ahead and explore, though. Because uh, it's going to be a while until we get stronger faces, so we might as well make use of that now while we can. Let's get that going. We're going to have you get to work over here. Let's get the both of you in there. And let's continue trying to gather up some iron as we can. An interesting discovery. We encountered a small encampment. The population is wearing ho uh, worn out yet fancy clothes. They seem to possess a lot of goods. Unfortunately, our explorer was seen while trying to sneak into their camp and caught by a guard. They'll be wary of our presence for a while. How unfortunate. Okay, a wounded dice. Wounded die will perish if wounded again. A die can be wounded when fighting and can be healed at a temple or an apothecary. There are some other ways to, to heal it, but you'll notice that the die is now cracked, which I think is quite a cool little, uh, little um, feature there. Let's continue gathering from this area. Let's get you healed and see what else we've got. I don't need a builder at this moment. That being said, a mill over here would be fantastically useful. And so we are actually going to try and get that one built right now. It does get a little bit harder to see. You can't move left or right, sadly. Um, you are kind of stuck uh, with the face as is. But oh, there we go. We've got a builder straight away. Marvelous news. Uh, don't need another explorer. Let's roll again. Still don't need this. Still don't need this. Oh my lord. Really? I don't want you to be a fighter until I've healed you. Wow. <laughs> really? Okay, let's let's put you to work over here. My goodness, that was annoying. But we've now got the two gold that we need. So, let's pop down some gold here, and I'm going to have you immediately well actually you're going to be useful for other things so i'm actually going to lock you in place auto place press shift and left click as i just did on a slot to or attempt to auto place the first valid die or resource found will be inserted i strongly caution against using that on the first valid die the reason for that is that it doesn't care if you've locked them or not like i've changed some dice so they can't be rolled but if i used shift click it would possibly put them in there and if i have locked the die because they load durability it might put a very low durability die into a slot that i would otherwise want kept for something else there we go let's go ahead and start producing some food over here produces food from wheat very very useful right into the blizzard Ooh. now let's quickly uh cover what just happened there this was the king's, uh, this particular ruler, sorry, not, not all kings, uh, their uh, wager ability. The wager ability is triggered when the combination that's shown there, combination to activate, is rolled. And it has to be rolled to some degree. You can lock the vast majority of the die required into their respective faces. Frozen die don't count as far as I'm, I'm aware, and we'll cover frozen die very, very soon. But uh, the main point is, I could have, of the six die, the two builders, two workers, uh, sorry, two gatherers and two workers necessary, I could have locked in place two of the builders, two of the gatherers, and one of the worker. But the final die, at least one die in that sequence, has to have been rolled. It cannot simply be locked. You have to have rolled... The, the at least one part of the combination for it to be valid but when you do that it will proc the the ability it does go on to cool down so uh, the this ruler's ability is uh, into the blizzard it will treat all frozen die in the pool that is our hand of die frozen die lose three durability uh, i i assume when that ability happens now that could be fantastically bad or you know quite good it, it really does depend uh, either way though not something you you want to rely on with uh for for getting you out of out of pickle really right let's continue to gather where we can i should have been going for the iron thinking about it we're, we're a little ways off still uh that will do let's get you in there and let's have you continue to work here there we 
go. Let's have you getting a little bit more done. I think we're going to have you over here. Let's get some more children die. And we're going to make the most use out of this farm we can. I probably only got enough time to do one more round of it. Right, the final thing we're going to do is we're actually going to upgrade this. It requires any kind of die in here. Now, the first time I, I did this, I didn't realize that because this shows any die, it will upgrade this into a class hall of the die that you use, or well, probably the face that you use. Again, there is a very, very important distinction to make between faces and die. Uh, nevertheless, this is now going to be converted into a peasant craft hall, uh, or rather class hall. That is going to increase the, the peasant happiness. Additionally, it may actually open up some new abilities for us, which will be very, very useful for us moving forward. Uh, we need a better die here. Okay, you will do. Let's get some more food being made. Now that we've got the uh, the farm here and the mill, our food is a little bit more... Uh, there we go. We, we've actually been cut off. That's a bit of a shame. Okay, now, every time the season changes, we will get a visit from the council. The council is comprised of the leaders of all of the classes that we have represented in our colony. Currently, we only have peasants in our colony. Uh, that makes it very easy for us to deal with because the, the only only um, policies that will be suggested will be peasant-aligned policies. And if you remember, the die may lose happiness from rejected proposals and gain it from accepted proposals. Basically, you will always get three proposals, and it'll be taken randomly from the amount of councillors that you have. So if you've got all five councillors, some of them won't make any proposal at all. If you reject a, re a proposal, because you're going to have to select one. So, for example, let's just say, for argument's sake, that I had a soldier proposal here and a citizen proposal over here, and I selected the peasant proposal. Peasants would be made happy, the soldiers and the citizens would be made unhappy, and the merchants and the monks wouldn't, wouldn't care at all. You can skip it. And if you skip, nothing changes. No one is made happy, no one is made sad. That might be something you would have to use if you had two classes on the verge of rioting. Uh, that might, might well uh, come into play. But these are game-long effects, and they can become incredibly powerful. Some of them will have uh, little, like, wax seals next to them. They are very rare proposals, uh, and they, they're kind of like your, your high-tier proposals. They, they, they don't cost anything to take, but they are very un uncommon to show up. So sometimes you'll pick that one just because there's not much of a chance that it's going to show up again. Mandatory cutting. At the start of every season, obtain two wood for every forest inside the peasant district. Now, this one is an interesting one because it doesn't require uh, durability lost on the forest, as far as I'm aware. Fur coats, dice are immune to freezing whilst in a peasant district. That is a huge one. And then mandatory exercise. A peasant die generated from a house starts with full durability. I mean, that's nice, but fur coats is going to be huge because it means that for the, throughout the, uh, the winter, we can work on the tiles in the range of our peasant district without our peasants suffering a chance to freeze. Every season, the council reunites and will ask you to enact a policy, uh, approving a policy proposed by a dice class with increases happiness. Uh, some policies are rarer than others, and they will have a wax seal. Choosing not to approve any policy will have no effect. I <laughs> completely forgot that that was going to pop up. I apologize. Look, I'm not trying to steal your job, game. You're a very wonderful game, and I, I like you very much. But, you know, if I do the job better, I don't, I don't you know, I, what are they meant to choose? Uh, class district consists of a district hall that was upgraded into a class district hall, and all buildings and locations adjacent to it. Constructing and destroying buildings in a class district affects the happiness of the dice class to which the district belongs. Some policies only affect the class district of a certain dice class. That one is an important one. Uh, in fact, that's effectively what we've just had. The, uh, the district that we've got available to us right now will not uh, suffer any, any freezing effects if people are working there. But any of the other districts may well have that. Now, if we have a quick look, we've got peasants over here. Uh, the backbone of our society, they are pleased. So they're going to gather extra resources. New district established, proposal policy enacted, and a bunch of new faces. We are now in winter. It's cold. Wheat fields are getting covered in snow. Current dice freezing chances 5%. Eventually that will go up. And when it does, that will be bad, as one might expect. All right, let's, uh, now, our dice outside of these areas 
are at risk of being caught uh, and frozen. Dice employed during winter will risk freezing. The colder the temperature, the higher the risk. Wheat farms will also stop working during winter. Powered on steam generators can prevent dice used in their range from freezing, which is why we're trying very hard to get a, uh, a generator up and running. I would really love it if we can if we can manage to get that in time, but I'm not sure that we're going to at this point. Uh, we've got a new dice. There we go. Steam generator. Now, this thing has quite the range, it seems, but we don't need it all the way up, uh, up there. We can honestly get by with it uh, by here just because it'll affect slightly more terrain, but we're going to pop that one down right there. Also, this gains a, this offers a, an efficiency boost. I don't think we, we really need an efficiency boost from here. I think we may have time. Is this finished? No. We weren't able to get any more wheat. That is, that is actually a shame. Oh, well. Into the blizzard has just activated. Thankfully, we didn't uh, lose anyone. Uh, I am going to need builders to work on this right now. If we can get that up and running, that's going to be fantastic news for us. Let's continue working in the one area that we've got where there is no risk of us uh, freezing. So let's uh, get peeps over here and continue to make food. There we are. Uh, we have got a little bit of a chance to do a bit more. I'm, I'm going to preempt this and get you some, some food. Uh, I usually wait a little bit longer, but for now, that will be okay. I'm going to lock this die in place so that I can use the mill on the next turn without really even having to roll. And you may have noticed I am slowly working through this one tile in particular as fast as I can. Uh, I say slowly working through as fast as I can. Bit of a bit of a uh, oxymoron there, I guess. Uh, let's pop this over here. Now we've got the steam generator. We're mo we're still only at five percent chance of, of freezing, but. 5% chance of freezing is, is high enough. For three wood, I can run the steam generator. And every die within its range, so that includes this tile, these two tiles, will be safe from freezing. I'm going to wait until the chance of freezing goes up from 5%. Uh, maybe a bit of a bit of a bold move, honestly, but uh, we're going to go for it. Uh, but now we have the steam generator, I feel a lot more, more safe about using my die uh, in other areas. Uh, what kind of buildings have we got? Build a barrack, build a school, build a workshop, turn on a steam generator. My lord, you have a lot of things you want me to do, don't you? All right, we've got a school down here that allows us to convert people into pe into citizen dice. I think this would actually probably be a very worthwhile thing to do. So let's go ahead and pop that down. And immediately get some builder dice into that building. All right, let's uh, roll the die again. We're going to need you down here. How cold is it? Not so cold that I need to worry about it just yet, but it is getting there. Uh, we're going to want you to gather some more. Uh, these die are honestly not useful to me right now, so we're just going to roll again. And you're definitely going to need to be re-rolled. You, however, can do me some work. So let's get you up there and working on those tiles. Let's pop you in here. How cold are we? Still only 5%. It will eventually get a lot worse. There we go. Oh, a dice is frozen. <laughs> Damn it. That 5% chance. Frozen dice cannot be rolled or employed. It can be healed in a temple or a tavern, or it will unfreeze on its own at the beginning of summer. So, have we moved up? Uh, we haven't, but I'm actually going to start popping in the fuel we need. It has a little bit of a timer to kick in. It is going to kick in just before this dice tries to leave. And I, I believe that the, the die are checked when they leave the house, not uh, or, or, or when they leave their job, not at the beginning. Now, we've built the school. This allows us to convert peasant dice into citizens for two food. That's actually quite a lot of food, to be fair. They are hungry. Very hungry indeed. There we go. We've got that active. Uh, I would like some more food on that. No, Oh, actually, no, we cannot have more food as we have uh, run out of, uh, of wheat. Now let's go ahead and get a citizen dice. I think that would be very wise. Also, I would like another peasant dice if we could. Uh, let's pop you in there. You definitely need some grub though, so let's uh, get that happening. You, however, can safely go and gather some wood. You can gather some wood as well on the far side, or we can get some stone. I think we'll go with the stone for now. Our uh, soldiers, I'm tempted to hold on to those for now. Empowering. 
Okay, so empowering. The faces of your die have a power value ranging from 1 to 8. The power of a face can influence the results of the recipes, unless indicated otherwise, the power of a face is 1. A face of a die can have a maximum power of 4. However, construct die can have double that. The power of a face can be increased in various ways, such as the en an, uh, enhancement chamber. Now, this is basically like you're training that particular die, not the class, that particular die to be better on only one face. So in the case of our peasants who have, uh, for example, multiple work face, multiple gather face, you'd only be empowering one of the gather faces. But, you know, it's a very really important thing to do. We'll cover construct die uh, later because that, that is going to require a, uh, a building we don't even have yet. They're forge. Right. Citizens. Cultured people dedicated to research and technology. You can convert peasant dice into citizen dice inside a school. Effect when pleased, produce extra resources, and effect when angry, buildings may go on strike. Now, it's at this point that we can actually start getting into research. We first need to get a workshop, and we would need three citizen dice to use it, as the dice themselves uh, have uh, one face, oh, sorry, two faces that have uh, research, but we need three in total to generate any research. However, they have one of their work faces with a power of two, which means a single citizen, if you roll that particular of the two work faces, would be able to work a field by themselves, which is actually quite an impressive feat when you think about it. Now, we are wanting a workshop. We're also wanting a barrack. The barrack over here converts peasant dice into soldier dice. And I think we actually have to have one of these. But I'm going to place this this uh, building right there. I'm going to need some builders. So let's uh, get you down. We've got one. We've got two. Uh, I am actually going to pop down enough resources for this to... go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No. Can I get that back? Wah. It was about to... Uh, you know what? Let's, let's pop, it, pop it down and see if it, it gives... Just adds more time to the timer. I'm not sure how that will work. But uh, we can always hope that it'll work the way I hope and just add more and more. We're up to 2 minutes and 30. I didn't actually see what it got to previously, so I guess we'll find out uh, another time uh, in editing for me, but uh, you will thankfully have that information to hand. Still, it'll be useful to find out how that one plays out. Now, this one took quite a lot of builders to get on the go, uh, but still, not too bad. We've still got some gold, which means that I could build another district if I really wanted to. I don't quite yet. But to have a quick look at some of the other options we have, we've got a military outpost over here, so it allows uh, raiding of nearby encampments and hostile structures. We've got the economy, allows trading with nearby encampments, and finally we've got religion, which would allow us to interact, simply interact with nearby areas. That is definitely something I would be interested to look at. Now, I need you to get a bit of grub in you. There we go. And we have finally gotten rid of that tree area there. That is actually good news for us. Uh, we are going to want... Well... I do actually want another building. We want production. Uh, a herbalist hut. It's going to require wood that we're currently using to stave off the winter chill. Not the best scenario to find ourselves in, but uh, okay. Let's pop you in there. Let's get a little bit more on the go. We want one peasant soldier. Do we have enough iron? We do not. And the uh, iron mines exist outside of our territory. That is a shame. I did not do the most uh, forward th uh, for uh, forward thinking there. But it's, it's interesting how the steam generator is actually thawing the ground. I like that a lot. That is very frost punky. Uh, I approve. All right, well, let's roll the dice and see what we get. We could take a risk. I only need one. Sure, let, let's let's risk it for a biscuit. There's there's a th you know there's a there's a seventy percent chance that they're not going to get frozen, which you know is, is not too bad. Uh, let's get another. Uh, we don't have enough food anymore. I could hit the hunting lodge. That might be worth our while, uh, but I'm going to have to roll another dice for that. Okay. Best of luck. We've got two dice operating out in the wilderness. We've also got a citizen who can't really do too much right now, but uh, we're going to hold that. And Well, actually, is there really much reason for us to hold it? I don't think. I'm going to keep one sword available to me for now. Uh, we haven't quite finished there. Okay, you absolutely need some food, and our steam generator 
has run down. So let's pop down some extra wood there. Now, honestly, there is something to be said about not... Well, actually... Hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get this going. Uh, never mind, we can't get... Oh, of course! My indecisiveness there... Didn't cost you a freeze, but just to cover why that happened the way it did. The town hall is passing efficiency, so this is working 25% faster. I didn't, I didn't account for that when I, when I was planning. Oh, I've got enough time to activate the steam generator; it should be fine. Uh, but no, no, it was not. Uh, nevertheless, let's continue to grab some wood up here. That should be fine. Uh, we have now got the two iron that we want, and I would like to. Well, you know what? I'll take one of the swords and get you upgraded. Now, I actually very much don't want you to to freeze. The whole point of having a soldier is so that we've got someone to protect us, and if they're frozen stiff, that's not really going to do much protecting. Uh, we will keep this, this uh, sword die held for us, though, just in case we can use it. Right, I'm going to get you working in there, and although I don't want to get rid of this forest, it is within our area, and I can harvest it 26 times before we have any trouble and get rid of that forest. Strong men defending our interests and expanding our reign. You can convert peasant dice into soldier dice in the barracks. Effect one, please, prevents riots. Effect when angry, dice may get occasionally wounded. Well, now, as you can see, we've got some interesting buildings there. Upgrade three peasants into citizens. Uh, all right. I would love to if I had the food. I do not, so it's not going to be happening anytime soon. But what I will do is I'll continue to uh, dig around over here. We're coming out of winter, it looks like. It's starting to, to go more towards a greeny colour, and that's where we need it to be. Uh, over here, we could risk it for a biscuit, I think, and maybe even risk it for another biscuit over there. There we go. But you'll notice the soldier die has two torches. I assume those are raid die. Uh, raid faces, rather. One building face and three sword faces, that, that is combat faces, but one of them is empowered, which is actually very, very nice to see. Uh, I will lock you in place, and I'm going to lock that because it's on the, on the highest face that we can have from you, which is marvellous. Oh. Oh, dear. Uh, wager ability. Each ruler has a different wager ability, which can be activated by rolling the required combination. Dice that are locked are also considered, but not frozen or exhausted dice. At least one face from the combination must be rolled. Can I keep you alive? Oh my lord, I think we may be able to keep you alive. I am ultra happy about this fortuitous turn of events. Extremely fortuitous, if you ask me. Um, okay, that, that, was, that was actually completely unplanned. Uh, very much appreciated, but ultra unplanned. We are now at 12 of 12. I could roll it more. And one of the ways that you could do this is, for example, I could put one die in here and just keep it there. One die over here, one die over there. Not put the, the resources in. So I could basically bank a couple of die and just take them out later on, which would allow me to fill my die pool a little bit fuller. And to that end, I'm going to do exactly that. Let us get more people in the colony, please. Actually, you can you can go over here and I'll give you a little bit of food. Uh, that means you go in there and uh, you hold the line. Right, what do we want to build? We want the herbalist hut, as this is going to give us the apothecary. Uh, additionally, we could have a town square. Uh, holds festivals that can increase the happiness of a dice class. Arms house, we can convert dice into peasants. Or we can look at some of the other options. We could go for a workshop, but uh, I'm kind of feeling that a monastery might be a better option for us. Uh, let's have a look at the, the workshop, though. Uh, where would that be? Manipulation? Production? Oh, the workshop, right there. Oh, we need some iron for that one. Okay. Well, we can we can definitely look to get that. So uh, We've got one frozen dice, sadly. Uh, we've got enough wood? Yeah, we have. And I should be able to stop there being any chance of you freezing, which I would very much like to avoid, if at all possible. Now, this die, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to roll it, but if we manage to get the, the two-face work die, then I will stop rolling at that point, because I, I would actually like that die. I don't need any of these ones, though. Uh, let's continue rolling through. You can honestly just go and get yourself a little bit of uh, 
a little bit of health there, and we'll get another citizen die added to the stack. Now, at some point, I may have to abandon a die. Not what I would like to do, I'm going to be honest with you, but it may be necessary. Uh, however, we could convert this die into a citizen. That would not be at all a bad choice. So, basically, you can, if you're willing to, to play, you know, kind of on the edge, you can just have loads of die much above your limit and just keep the die constantly busy, constantly doing something so you never have them pooled up in your the appropriately named die pool. Uh, so that would actually uh, work out for you in the, in the long run. All right, let's uh, get another roll. Okay, time for us to get out there. Trying for us to risk it for some more iron tasty biscuits. Uh, let's have a look. And oh, we can't use you yet. But we have got the correct die over here. So we're going to lock this die down. And uh, let's see. Have we got anything else? Well, you may as well just go and get a little bit of uh, health there. And we will pop you. Grab some more stone. You can grab some more. Uh, probably food at this point. And you can grab a little bit more wood as well not terribly bad i'm going to need the the food though rather rather soon let's pop you over there just to keep uh, keep things from getting a little bit too crazy we do need an extra citizen though uh let's roll the die you can go over here get fed sadly uh we're not in the place that i want to be let's reorganize my die a little bit oh that i had no idea that you could just pick them all up <laughs> That makes things so much awesome. Uh, okay, let's pop them down. No, okay, fine. Let's grab all the die. Drop the die down on this side. Okay, that's, that's, that's marvelous. All right, have we got any die that are currently active at a job? No. We are at our very maximum amount of uh, die in the hand now. So we're going to have to bear that in, in mind going forward. The winter is almost over, though. And sadly... I, I know it's going to make some of you sad. That means that we're very, very close to being uh, being at the end of this episode. Right, let's uh, get out there, get a little bit more iron on the go. We've got 10 stone, we've got 13 wood, which is amazing coming out of winter. We've got two food and, and only one frozen dice, which is actually genuinely, uh, genuinely impressive to me. 14 out of 12 die. Uh, one is wounded, so we're going to need an apothecary soon. That is actually something that I would very much like to get. We have got the ability to build a workshop now, though. So let's lay down the foundation for that. Uh, we'll pop you over here, grab a little bit more wood besides. You may as well grab a chunky bit of food there. And I think, sure, we're going to go ahead and we're going to train up a new citizen as well. Oh, okay. Well, that's, uh, that's actually quite nice. Let's get you two over here. And again, this is another way of just kind of banking a bunch of dice. If you've got a build, if you've got enough resources to do it, you can place down a building that has a very large build requirement, at, or maybe even a couple, and just bank dice in there uh, until later. But there we go. We've converted more people into citizens. And winter has passed. The snow is gone. The weather is getting warm again. We made it through our first winter. Now it's time to move forward and discover what lies ahead. But that is going to have to wait... Until a future episode, should there be one. Again, if you enjoyed this first taste and would like to see more, do let me know down in the comments below or with a like on the video. And if you're interested in picking up this game, I would appreciate it if you would uh, use the tracker link down in the video description. I'm not getting any kind of kickback from that. It just lets the developers know where the traffic is coming from. But with that, thank you ever so much for joining me for this episode. I do hope you enjoyed. And until next time, in the words of St. Algorithmus, are dice great? <laughs>